All right, so we are starting the new unit. This is chapter four, so there will be a chapter worksheet that's also up, and you're welcome to get started on that right away, right? So you don't have to wait to the last minute to um, ask any questions. Um, so yeah, let's get right to it. So some of the stuff in the beginning is gonna be things I sort of expect that you know, um, but if for some reason it's something so weird or different, I might like write it down. Um, the first day, uh, we are classifying triangles by their angles and by their sides, and so, Again, I'm pretty sure you already know these, but if we call it acute, it's when all three angles are acute. Um, it's an obtuse or right angle is because it has a single obtuse or a single right angle in it. Um, obviously, you can't have more than one obtuse angle because then it won't close to make a triangle. Same thing with right angles. Um, so it's pointing that out. A one that's not necessarily a hard word to know, but maybe one you're not used to seeing is an equiangular triangle means all three angles are the same. Now it does turn out that for a triangle, if it is equiangular, it will also be equilateral, but shapes with more sizes don't have to be that way. Like, so for example, a rectangle is a real fast example I can show you where all four angles are the same, but not all four sides are the same. So in a triangle, it does happen to be that when one of those is happening, so is the other. Um, but it is, by its own definition, a different word, equiangular. So if that one's kind of new-ish to your brain, I would keep that in mind. Um, let's see, the smart board is not wanting to move over. Okay, there we go. Classifying it by its sides. Um, here's where we're talking about equilateral is when all three sides are the same. Um, I want to emphasize something here. An isosceles triangle isn't just when it has two sides. By definition, it is at least two sides. So I would want you to keep in mind for something like an always, sometimes, never question, an equilateral triangle would always be isosceles. Um, whereas could an isosceles be equilateral sometimes? Um, and so just keep that in mind because I would expect most of us in our head have the accidental definition of two congruent sides. The definition is at least two congruent sides. And the reason for that is there are some interesting properties that happen when you have two congruent sides. And so an equilateral by definition also being that would also share those same properties. So that's a little bit behind the math about that definition distinction, but definitely keep that in mind. And then scaling is when none of the sides are the same. So all three are different. Okay, something that I also expect that you already know, in fact, we've been using it um, in a lot of our math already. I think I'm gonna recalibrate the smart board because it's not willing to move. Um, I'm gonna do that super fast. But I'm pretty sure that what it's talking about right there is just the fact that we know that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180, which is again, something that we already know, we've already been using. Um, but I think it's just in here to just see like, hey, we're in the triangle unit, like you definitely, need to know that. Um, so yeah, we're just basically making sure that they, yeah, they all have 180. Um, and specifically, if we have a right triangle, we'll know that one of them is already 90. So the other two would be complementary, have to add up the rest of the way to the 90, that kind of thing. And the fact that we know that there can only be a total of one right or obtuse angle, otherwise it won't close. So nothing fancy, just things that it wants to make sure we're aware of. These problems, I'm not so worried about us finishing it. I just want to make some clarifications on this style of question. If I know something is isosceles, so I know that at least two of the sides match, it has to tell me something like which one is the base, or it has to have some marks on it. Now I get it. This one, you can look at it and kind of go, oh, I think it's going to be these two. And it turns out that it is. But let's say it's like not really drawn to scale and they all kind of look the same. Then I either need the markings to tell me or I needed to tell me who the base is so that then I automatically know that the other two are the ones that are congruent. So when it tells me that KL is the base, I now know that the other two are the ones I can set equal. Once I find what the variable is, I can then plug it back in and tell you what all of the sides are. Okay, and the answer key to these notes do show all of that work, but just in general. Here, if I tell you it's equilateral, then I honestly can pick any two of these is set equal to each other because they're all equal. It's like pick your favorite two and solve. When I plug it in, all three should give you the same answer. So I don't really want to waste your time with those examples. Uh, I think they're pretty easy, but again, the answer key to these notes do show all of that work. 
what I would like to do is go through one of these where they give me three ordered pairs and they ask, okay, classify it, basically saying, is this going to be, um, wants to be at sides, right? So yes, so just basically is it scaling, isosceles, or equilateral? Um, so pretty much one at a time, you're going to have to like just see what happens. So from negative two to negative four, I know that that is two spaces. From negative six to zero, that is six spaces. So I'm gonna have to like work out what that distance is. I'm also gonna have to go from here. From negative four to three is um, seven spaces. From zero to negative one is one space. And also I'll have to do between the other ones. Um, from negative two to three is five spaces. From negative six to negative one is also five spaces. So I'm doing all my little distance formulas that hopefully, you know, we've been practicing when that showed up in other units. So finishing this out, uh, two squared is what? Four plus six squared is 36. So this one is square root of 40. Um, let's say two times 20, two times 10, two times five. So two square root of, both of these are inside, so they get multiplied together. So two root 10. This one is a square root of 49 plus one. So the square root of 50. Um, let's say five times 10, two times five. So I do have a pair of fives that come out and a two. Here, five squared, so we get 25 plus 25 is also square root of 50. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I know this one's gonna be five root two as well. So based off of that, we have two sides that are congruent. So we would say that this is isosceles. Boom. All right, so then definitely the homework will practice something like that. So you'll, you'll get some practice at that. So we're also covering 4.2, um, just the angles are here again. Yes, we know that all three angles add up to 180. We already know that. So some problems again that are worked out in the notes, you're welcome to look at, but I'm just gonna kind of highlight quickly that if I know two of these angles, I can subtract from 180 and then I'll know what this one is. These two are vertical angles, so angle one and two would match. And if I know both of these, I can subtract from 180 and find the third. So just kind of that logic. Here we've got an even more crazy looking question. Um, I start with the fact that in here I have two of them. So I can subtract from 180 to find this one. I know that these two are going to match. I know that these are going to be linear pairs, uh, which would match across here. And at that point, I know both of these, so I could find the third. I know both of these, I can find the third. Well, this one might be a little tricky at first, but this whole thing makes a line. So if I know both of these, I can subtract to find that one. And then knowing these, I can find the last one. So again, I'm just kind of pointing out that we could slowly walk through and build that. And again, the answer key to this, I'll probably flash it at the end and just show you, but I do have that all worked out. Now, problems that I would definitely like to talk about because these are more likely things you're gonna want help on. And these are part of your homework tonight. So if you did print the packet, the um, 4.1-2 worksheet, I think this is on the back or the second page of that, depending how you're looking at it. And this is number five and number seven. So. Let's just read them and then I'll kind of talk about my strategy with attacking these type of problems. So in the triangle GHI, the measure of angle H is 20 more than G and G is eight more than I. What is the measure of each angle? It's like, oh my goodness. So one of the things that we generally are going to know is that the three angles are G plus H plus I are adding up to 180. That's one of the main statements that we're gonna end up using. Separate from that, I'm gonna have to just read these sentences and like write down what I know. So H is 20 more than G. So H is the same thing as G plus 20. Now you can put like 20 plus G. I'm a huge fan of writing them like MX plus V, so I like to put like the letter first and then the plus or minus. So if it was like, 20 less than G, it would look like G minus 20. So that's just kind of FYI. That's how I approach these questions. The other one says is that G is eight more than I. So G is equal to I plus eight more. Now, we're gonna have to, I don't wanna say do systems like elimination and stack them, but we are gonna have to plug them in. And so the strategy I'm going to tell you is I look at which letter occurs the most between all of these things. So for example, G, H, and I are all in here. 
Here, I only see H one more time, I one more time, and I see G twice. So what that means to me is that I can replace both of these with the letter G. So I guess what I want to get at is I want to, how should I say this? I don't want to have them all say G equals. I actually want it to be like H equals a G plus a 20. So here I actually want I equals, I'm going to subtract that, and the I is equal to G minus H. So why is that helpful? Because I can go up here and leave G as it is, plus, and instead of H, I can write G plus 20. And instead of I, I can write, because I moved that, G minus 8 equals 180. So combine like terms, I have 3G. 20 minus 8 is what? 12. Uh, subtract 12 from both sides. 180, 171, 68, and then divide that by 3. So g equals 3 goes into 16 5 times perfectly, with 1 left over, 3 goes into 18 6 times. So g is 56, and then I can come over here, h is equal to 56 plus 20, so 66, 76, and i is equal to g minus 8. So 56 minus 8 would be 48. And if I want to check, I could add these up real quick and just confirm that they do add up to 180. Um, but yeah, in your homework, you're going to have several of these to practice. So I'm going to do one more with you. But again, the main idea is I know that the 3 have to add up to 180. And whichever letter appears the most means I can write the other letters equal to something with that letter in it and they're able to replace. So it won't always be like, oh, the first one, make them all G. It depends who appeared the most. So let's do another one and so I can walk you through that again. So when I know it's triangle STU and we're talking about what the angles are doing, it's S plus T plus U is equal to 180. And then what do I know about any of these things? U is half of T, so U is half of T and S is 30 more than T. So S is equal to T plus 30. So which letter am I going to focus on because I'm going to be able to replace everybody else with it? It's T. T is appearing the most number of times, which means I know that everybody can be written in terms of T. So u equals half of t, cool. So I literally can just replace that as half of t. s equals t plus 30, so this can be t plus 30, and of course this plus t is gonna stay, so now all of these can be written with the letter t in it so that I can solve it. I wanna caution you that up here, remember, at least one of them I had to solve, and that can definitely happen. Um, so let's say like I needed to know what if I needed this to say T, let's say U had appeared the most, I would maybe times both sides by two and say that T equals two times U. Like those are the things that might happen depending which letter I'm trying to replace with. Now, when I go to do this question, I usually like to get rid of the fraction if there's one in there and times this whole thing by two right now. Now you might condense or move some things around first and that's totally fine, but just my general strategy is to do that. So I'm getting two T plus 60 plus 2t plus this cancels that out to so just t and don't forget to also multiply that would be 360. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5t subtract 60 is 300 divide by 5 and I get that t equals 60. Um, and at this point I can plug them in so u equals half of that so u equals 30 and S equals T plus 30, so 6 is 90. S equals 90. Um, and yeah, so that's all it asked for. Now, if it did ask me, hey, what type of triangle are these? Like just for example, just in case it did, all three of these are acute. So I could call this an acute, and they're all different scalene triangles. So I would be able to say it's an acute scalene triangle if I wanted its full name of angle or sides, or just the one that it wanted. This other one, 30, 60, and a 90, this would be considered a right as far as the angles because it's a 90 degree, and 30, 60, and 90 are all different 
So this would be referred to as a scalene right triangle or a right scalene triangle. And again, it didn't ask you for that, but just to kind of practice that vocabulary in action, on any of these questions, we could have done that. So even on this question down here, where I mentioned it was isosceles because they were both the same, um, I, without drawing this, I probably actually don't know what the angles look like, which is probably why it just wanted me to do it on the sides. Because if I took the time to plot these, like negative two, negative six, negative four, zero, three, negative one, I just sketched that. So I don't know if I feel super confident in what that angle looks like. So I don't really want to make any assumptions, but generally speaking, if I knew what the angles were, I could label that as well. So I think that was it on that last slide. I just want to make sure before I talk about one other thing. Oh my gosh, smart board is being extra to the seat, doing that thing again. I'm just gonna slide it down with my mouse because that's just going to be faster. All right, so we covered that, we covered that, we covered that. Okay, cool, so we did cover all that. So then, the last final thing is what's called the exterior angle theorem. And this is intended to sort of be a shortcut when there are weird algebra questions. So what this thing says, I'm gonna just say what it says and then kind of explain it to you. It says the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle. So an exterior angle generally, so if I have a triangle and e mini mini mo, you just extend one of these sides out, this is called an exterior angle. It says the exterior angle will always be equal to the two angle, it's called the two remote interior angles. That's a really complicated definition. You don't need to know the words remote interior, like really. Um, but what it means is the other two angles that it's not right next to, this will equal both of those together. And part of the reason behind why that is true is that I know that this linear pair makes 180, and I know that all three of these added together make 180, and because of that, there ends up being sort of a connection there. And so usually in class, I have my students just make up something. Like, um, let's say this is 40, and this one is, I don't know, it looks kind of too, so we'll say 100. Actually, that ends up being the same number, so let's not do it. Let's do 110. And so I'd say, okay, well look, if this is truly a triangle, then 110 plus 40 is 150, this would have to be 30. Cool. And since this is a linear pair, this would have to subtract from 30 um, and equal 150. And I said, what do you notice about this 150 and these two numbers that they add up to this outside every single time? Like, I was like, well, make up something else. Maybe that was just luck. I was like, okay, well, let's call this one 20. Let's call this one 80. 80 plus, oh, I keep doing that. Uh, let's do 100. So 100 plus 20 is 120. This would have to be 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. This would have to be 60. So again, if I subtract from 180, because this linear pair would make that 120, we know that this is the same thing as the further angles away from it added together. Okay, that might not be that big of a deal. Honestly, if all we were doing was just a number, it's probably easier to just subtract from 180 and do it again. I get it, like there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. But where it does help us is in situations where there's a lot of algebra. Because if I know, oh, x plus 32 plus whatever this is makes 180, I'm like, oh, great. Well, then subtract this from one. It just gets awkward to subtract that from 180 to get this, to then add up these three to equal 180. It just gets messy. Like if this was literally 50, I don't know if I would waste my time saying, oh, 50 is the same thing as those added together. I'd be like, well, 50 means this is 130 and that plus 32 plus x and I would just solve it. Like that's how I would do it with numbers. But when it is weird variables, it's probably easier to go this one always equals the further two away added together. So 2x minus 48 is the same thing as x plus 32 and then I could solve through that. Okay, this one, 3x plus 10 equals the further away angles added together. So x plus, that means 90 degrees, is equal to the 3x plus 10, and I could solve it. Okay, that basically is a, I want to say it's a shortcut, but it's basically a trick that really does help when you have weird algebra out here, and subtracting that from 180 isn't 
convenient. Again, if that just said 108 degrees, I would literally just subtract from 180 and then add these up to 180, and it's really not a big deal. Um, but when there's algebra, you will love this shortcut, and it's worth knowing. Okay, the homework that goes with this is in your packet. It's the 4.1 4.2 worksheet, so you're welcome to print just that page or kind of write those problems down as you go. Um, and just since we're here, I will show you quickly just the notes that you'll see. I did mention that I have all of these problems worked out, so you are welcome to like, you know, scan these for any other information that you might want. Like I said, this section that I skipped the math on, you can see that I have it all worked out. So you can take a look at any of that if you just want to see all of the problems worked out. Same thing here. Okay, all of these are worked out for you. Okay. Apologize that the smart board is being funny, which means that I am also having issues. So, Anyways, I think you get it. The answer key is up. See, look, today is going to be a good day. It's reminding me to have a good, wonderful day because even if the world is dying tomorrow by a giant asteroid, I can still enjoy the moment. Okay, so y'all saw what the homework was. The answer key is literally online, so you can read through that um, if you want to see any of that. Was all that I was saying. Anyways, have a good day. See you next time.